Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe and this is the final episode in the font rendering series. So we talked about creating these sign distance fields which ended up generating images that look like this. So the capital letter A turns into something like this. Now in this tutorial, let's actually use this information to render that character to the screen, right? How do we use this now? Well, it's actually quite easy and we're gonna do a simplified approach and not go over generating the whole alphabets and stuff because I feel like we already did that in a couple tutorials ago with regular fonts and I just wanna go over how to render these. So we have this information, we want to get this information to the GPU, right? We say generate the code point bitmap and then if we look, this outputs an image and we can take a look and see this puts the image right here to test.png. Well, instead of outputting that image, let's actually just upload this to the GPU. And we have a perfect example of how to do that inside of our C font file, right? Instead of saving it, we can do exactly what we did here, right? We created this buffered image and then we have this function public upload texture, right? And what does this do? Well, this creates a uh, texture on the GPU and then it basically just uploads that image. So I'll copy this code. Uh, it would be better if you create an actual function that sort of abstracts this away, and then you can use that same function for both of these, but we'll just do it this way. All right, so let's go ahead and we will say, uh, we will have this uh, import all those. And then let's go ahead and make a public texture ID just so that we can use this image and actually display it with the GPU. So we'll say public static uh, texture ID, so int texture ID, and we'll just assign that to zero. I guess negative one would be better so that we get, we might get an error, I doubt we would, but a little bit better. And then anyways, let's make this static so that we can call it from within this class. And now we just wanna take this buffered image and this literally just does exactly what we need, right? It just takes the buffered image, uploads it, uh, generates it, puts repeat on, puts linear filters on, uh, says it's gonna be RGBA eight, which is fine with me. So instead of writing it like we do here, let's just go ahead and actually, you can probably leave that just to make sure it's still generating it properly. But, and then we'll just say upload texture and we want to use a buffered image. Well, that is our test image. So we'll just upload that. Cool. That'll create a texture, give us a texture ID and we should be good. <laughs> All right. It's really that simple. Now let's go into the window and uh, let's use that instead of using our batch shader and stuff. So right now we create this batch and then basically what we do is we say, add some text, add some text. What we're gonna do instead is we're just gonna render this one character. So let's kind of take a look at this batch and see if we can have like a render, just a quad. So if we look at this uh, add character function, we could probably use this actually. And then for char info, what it's gonna do is if we look at this, it just gets the texture coordinates out of the char info and we'll just use the character info that we have, okay? So we'll just generate like uh, texture coordinates going from zero to one, so that uses that whole texture. And I think that should be good. So if we go back into main, or I'm sorry, window, we'll go ahead and instead of doing this, uh, let's just comment out this batch .add text. Well, we'll comment out all of this adding text because we're just gonna use a whole different thing. And then right here, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna say batch .add character. We'll add it at zero, zero. So I think that's the center of the screen. It might not be, we'll find out. The scale, um, we'll do 2.0F. I can't remember, let's let's take a look what the scale does again. Okay, so if we look into here, the scale just multiplies it by chart info width and chart info height, okay? So yeah, we can just make uh, the chart info width and height one, and then the scale will basically be our font size. So yeah, so let's go up here and create the character info real quick, just so that we have that. We'll say chart info, uh, one quad equals new char info. And then this is gonna take in a source X, source Y, which we'll say zero, zero, width height, which we'll say is one, one. And I believe that might generate what we need. No, it does not, okay? So then when we calculate the texture coordinates, let's see, this says source X over font width. So if we just say font width is uh, one, one, then that should give us what we want. So if we just say one quad, dot calculate texture coordinates, and then we just give it one, one, this should give us like uh, one texture, right? Because what we're trying to do is we have this image and we just have one image, which is one character. And we're just basically saying, use the whole image. And so this should do that for us, hopefully. And then when we go into here, we can use that character info now. So we'll say, use the 
uh, one quad info. And then for RGB, we'll do 0x FF0000. Well, we'll do EE0101. Uh, okay, so like give it a red color. We'll do 02. Okay, so this should add one character. And then when we flush the batch, instead of using our shader, well, we want to do a different shader. And then the texture that we want to use is instead of using this texture, we'll say GL bind texture. And then we'll do GL texture buffer. Buffer. And then we'll use uh, SDF.textureID. Okay, so that should just use that texture. And then instead of using this shader, let's go ahead and create a new shader. So right here we have public shader shader. We'll say public shader SDF shader. Yeah, and it looks like we don't even set that shader in here, but we'll say SDF shader dot use here so that we end up using the shader. We still want to upload the texture. Uh, we'll still upload the projection matrix. We probably, we might use it. I don't know. Anyways, let's go into this uh, window class one more time. Let's generate that shader. So we'll say shader SDF shader equals a new shader and we'll say assets slash uh, SDF shader dot GLSL. Okay, and we'll create this in just a moment. So that should be all the changes necessary. And now it should add that character. So just whatever character we generate, which in this case is an A, uh, we could change this to whatever we want, and then it'll render that. So let's go in create a shader. Now we'll go ahead and say new file SDF shader dot GLSL. We'll hit okay, we want to add that to Git. copy this just for a base. Uh, so we get in position, color, texture coordinates, which is good. We want to put out color and texture coordinates. That's good too. And I think we'll leave all this the same too. That should be fine. I'm just going to fix that indentation. And then we get the U font texture here. Now, this is where the interesting part happens. So in our SDF shader, we said if C is 0.5, that's the edge of the character or line. If it's greater than 0.5, color white or whatever color. If it's less than 0.5 color black or whatever the other color is. So let's just do that. We'll say if C is greater than 0.5, we're going to say color equals this times vec color, which should be good. And I think if we use C, that should be fine as well. And then we'll say else color equals, we'll say vec 40000, which should give us just no color, which is good. Let's hit shift F10, see what happens. Okay, and we get an error. Let's see what's going wrong. Oh, we create the SDF shader, but we never assign it. So let's go ahead and say batch dot SDF shader equals SDF shader. <laughs> that way we're actually using it. Okay, let's hit shift F10 again. See what we get. We're getting a very tiny red square down here. Can you see that? It's very tiny. So let's up that scale massively so that we can actually see this. We'll make this uh, 320. We'll see what happens now. Hit shift F10 one more time. Okay, so we just get a big red square. So clearly this is not working right. <laughs> let's see what happens. Uh, let's just make sure that this is working. So if we just output the vector, so if we just say color equals vec4 c c c1, let's see what happens there. And if we actually get the appropriate color. Now we still get a red texture. Oh, and you know what it is? <laughs> Man, this was an oversight. So look, we're putting in 255 for the alpha component here when we create the buffered image inside of SDF class. When we're creating the texture and uploading it to the GPU, we use the alpha component. Well, what is the alpha component? The alpha component's always going to be uh, 255. So yeah, that's not going to work. So instead, we'll just use the red component. So AR, so this would be 24, 16. So if we shift right 16, uh, that should be good. And then we'll just use the R component instead of alpha. Okay, so let's hit shift F10, see if that works. Okay, cool. So you see we get this really fuzzy A, red A. That's good. That is a step forward. Let's re-implement this function real quick and see what we get. We get the same thing. Something tells me we're using the wrong shader. Oh, and it looks like we're not uploading the data to the SDF shader. So go ahead and inside of uh, batch, just make sure that we're uploading this to the SDF shader. Let's see if that fixes our problem. And it does. Cool. So you see we get the letter A and now it is uh, crisp. It's kind of weird looking. Now, this is sort of the most fun part of this whole project. So let's go ahead. Let's blow up the character first of all. Okay. So I'm going to blow up the character to 
we'll do like 620 so almost double in size let's see how big that looks on here okay cool so you can see that we get this kind of wiggly behavior now that's just because of the size of the stf we're using we're using relatively small stf uh, very small usually you would want to upscale this to like 2k but that can take a lot more time so let's look at some of the things we can do right now too. some of the effects you can apply using the sdf shader so if we go into the shader we can add in an extra clause here so we can say else if c is greater than 0.48 color equals vec4 and let's go ahead and change this from 111c to 1111 real quick and then let's change this one to 111c times vec4 f color one i think that's more like what we want and if we do this what we're going to end up with if this works how i expect it to okay cool so what you can see is we get this kind of weird outline around it and that outline is just sort of uh the color of this c well let's change this up a little bit and then we can make that one and then we'll make this c c c and i think this should give us an anti-aliasing effect and uh i'm sorry i forgot one step in here what we also want to do is we want to smooth step this so what we can say is uh, float smooth step equals smooth well we can't call it smooth step because that'll clash we'll say float uh smooth c equals smooth step and then what we're gonna do uh and make sure this is lowercase so we're gonna say uh smooth c equals 0 0.48 to 0 0.5 and we want to smooth out the value c and then what we're gonna do is instead of using the c value we'll use smooth c now let's go ahead and see what this does i think this will do what i want it to do okay cool uh, look at that. So you see how it kind of blurs the edges now? We can amplify this blur by changing this to, let's say, uh, we'll just create a variable for this. We'll say float um, midpoint cutoff equals 0 0.45. And then we'll use that here. And we will use that here. And we will use this to float upper point cutoff equals 0 0.5. And then let's place this in here and then we'll put this in right there okay so what is this doing this is basically smoothing and creating anti-aliasing for us and if we exaggerate the effect you can see we sort of get this halo and if we exaggerate this effect even more by going down to like 0 0.4 it's going to create a glow so this is one of the ways you can create uh, glows with this and you see we get this really nice glow what if you wanted an outline well, outlines are pretty easy too. Instead of smoothing the C value as we go across it, we can do what we saw just a second ago, where basically you would have like some sort of outline color. So say your outline color was just um, a slightly lighter version of this. So instead of using smooth C, we'll use 0 0.5. This will give us an outline now. And then you can see we get this big red outline that's half transparency. And you could, of course, change that to any color that you want. And if you want to change the size of the outline, well, just increase the cutoff. And basically what these cutoffs are is it's just interpolating between those alpha values. And since we use those alpha values, we can create this unique effects in very easily as well. And what we're doing when we say smooth C is it's basically, basically taking it and saying, okay, you want it between 0 0.45 and 5. That is the current range. Well, let's map that to the range 0 to 1. That's all this smooth step function does. And that gives us that nice effect of having sort of like a fade instead of a harsh one color right so if we use smooth c there then we get this nice glow right and then if we really exaggerate this effect let's go down to like 0 0.2 i just want to see what this looks like then we get this super super large glow it's just sort of like a glow now okay and then what we could also do say you want bold text well bold text isn't too hard too let's just increase this to 0 0.53 and we still want anti-aliasing so let's increase this to 0 0.52 well all of a sudden what you're going to notice is we have a thicker a it's just going to bold it oh whoops i did the opposite okay so this will give us a thinner a and if you want to go the opposite direction we go down so if we change this to four seven and we change this to four six then what we should see is a bold a and sure enough what we get is a bold a and then if you want the font as it was intended to be viewed, just make sure to use 0 0.5 since that was our original cutoff. And you can use 0 0.49, which is a pretty good anti-aliasing factor.
And you can see that that 0.49 just barely smooths it out. If we were to make this 0.5, uh, so it's actually the same value, what you'll notice is it looks kind of weird and you get like very harsh outline. Now, what about these smooth edges? Well, those smooth edges, like I said, is just because it's a side effect of uh, SDF rendering. So if we wanted to get rid of those, how would we do that? Well, you just change the upscale resolution. So if we go into the window, which is where I believe we generate it, yep. Uh, we generate it at size 32. And if we actually go into here, we have the upscale resolution I do right now at 1024. So if you wanted this to look nicer, you could increase it to like 4096. I'm going to skip ahead in the video because this is going to take my computer a bit. All right. So now I have that A. Whoops. And this is generated at 4K. And you can see that it did a little bit better. And this is just the downfall of SDFs. They don't do well for straight edged fonts. It just doesn't look that good. And so I would say if you have a simple font like this, maybe going with just a bitmap and rendering it at a slightly higher scale might be better for you. There are ways to get around this. There's things called multi-channel sign distance fields, which use multiple channels and use different uh, sort of distance generators in different channels of the image to get a better look. Uh, let's look at that repository real quick as well. So if you go to Chlumsky slash MSDF Gen, and I'll have this linked in the description, this is written in C++, but you can go down here and you can see how uh, he had the same exact problems that we have, right? This weird uh, sort of artifacts. Well, using the MSDF, multi-sign distance fields, you see that he gets this perfect letter A. And the only reason why I haven't implemented it is because it's difficult and it's not perfect. He even says up here that it works better for some fonts than it does for all fonts. So, you know, it's not the best, but it's definitely a pretty good direction to go. So if you want to see how to do something like this, I definitely recommend checking out his light writing. It's open source. Yeah, it's completely open source, MIT license. Check out his code. Look at how he does it because it is a great learning experience and maybe implement it yourself to see these better results. Anyways, that is it for font rendering series. I hope you guys enjoyed this series. I know it was short. If you want me to go into a little bit more into depth into like how fonts actually work, I could probably make a couple more follow-up episodes. But the reason I'm ending it now is because I'm sort of trying to move the channel into a new direction. Basically, I want to start moving the channel more towards C++. Now, I'm going to release a few more videos for the Game Engine Series 2 to try and tie that up as well and get it to a point where we actually can build a game with it and it's not just a cool tool, okay? But let me know what you guys think I should do with this channel in the future. I really want to move to C++ and do a C++ series for Java developers just because I've begun to really grow and love C++ and I want to share that with you guys. But if you guys would rather me continue with the Java series on Game Engine, then I will continue with that. I just can't split my focus right now with the work that I'm doing at my job as well. So I want to focus really good on one particular subject. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode.